straight away while listening to this talk, probably download those and start using them uh, all together. And uh, so this is what we are going to talk about. Okay, so, uh, you know, we made it into a kind of a rule for rule of three. So I'm going to talk about three productivity tips. I'll give you three specific productivity apps that were useful for doctors and three software uh, SAS, which is not a software as service, which you must have. Okay, so let's start with some productivity tips and something which again, uh, which I have learned, perhaps sometimes the hard way and something which I believe is going to be very useful to you if you use these tools uh, in your life. So the first and the most important technique I learned, this I, you know, this is something I learned when I was a student and I, I didn't know the name for it, but eventually when I started reading more productivity books, uh, you know, reading, uh, taking more productivity classes online, uh, perhaps listening to a lot of YouTube videos, I realized that there's a name for it and it's called the Pomodoro technique. Now, we all have limited attention spans and as with the, you know, technology is advancing, our attention spans start becoming even more and more smaller, right? So it is very difficult and, you know, if I see my own daughter, uh, the attention span is, is much lower than what I used to have, right? It, that's, that's the world we live in. But, you know, we make the best use of that and there is, you know, our brains also work in such a way that, you know, we tend to have a limited time when we can do deep focused work. So this technique is called as a Pomodoro technique. I don't know why it's called Pomodoro. Pomodoro is actually a type of, uh, uh, you know, type of tomato, which is very popular uh, from Italy. And perhaps, you know, the timer which was originally made uh, was very similar to a tomato. So it's called a Pomodoro technique, right? So what this technique is that you work for 25 minutes then take a five minute break and then you repeat the process. So your work schedules, your work uh, space should be in 25 minute trenches, right? And this is very important because you are able to do a deep focus work in that 25 minutes and then you let your mind relax for a few minutes and then come back to it. Now, some people, for some people, their focus is much better and they are, you know, 25 minutes may be a little less for them. So perhaps they can do a 45 minute cycle. So you can do a 45 minute cycle with a 15 day, 15 minute break and then repeat the 45 minute cycle. So there's an app to help you do that. Uh, this is an app for Mac. Uh, most of the apps I'm going to talk are cross platform, but this one is specifically for Mac. And you can see in the picture below this call, this, this is a free app called Horo, H-O-R-O. And in this, you can set the time, you know, you could, it could be 25 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on uh, whatever time suits you. And this is what I use every single day. So in the morning when I get, get up, when I start doing my work, I put a 25 minute timer. I work for that 25 minutes with deep focus. I keep my mobile switched off or mobile on a silent mode for 25 minutes. I don't want to be disturbed in that 25 minutes. And that five minute break, I whatever calls I missed, I call them back or whatever, you know, I, I go through, I maybe listen to music and then come back and do more of work. So this really helps me. And I think, you know, it keeps my mind active and I really you are able to do tremendous amount of work at, while not being tired doing the work. The second very important thing is time blocking. And, you know, if you need a, a task needs to be done, you need to give it a time and date in your calendar for it to be done. And that is the only way it gets done. For example, let's say I had to give a talk on productivity. That is on 23rd October, I had to give a talk at 6 p.m. Then I, when I put this on the calendar, uh, it tells me that I have to do this work at this point of time and there is a time limit to it and I have to complete this work. And if I don't do this, I will not be able to give a presentation on this. So, you know, I might as well do it, you know, and I, I end, end up doing it. So any work that you want it to be finished, it may be a small mundane task or it may be something very important. Either or, you give it a time, you give it a place, give it a deadline. And if you are able to do that, if you are able to block time for that, you will be able to do it. You will do it for sure. Right. And a lot of the times, you know, we tend to procrastinate things. You know, there are certain things uh, which, you know, uh, you don't want to do. You, you don't want to, call, you know, there, there is some uh, tax matter which you had to uh, finish or there was some, uh, you know, investment which you had to do or there was some friend you had to meet uh, or there's some relative you had to meet. But, you know, you just couldn't do it. Give it a time, give it a place and trust me, like magic, it gets done. Right. And if you write it, in fact, sometimes, you know, even if you write it on a piece of paper, it, the magic of writing something really is is tremendous and you know uh, just a free recommendation outside this uh, if you're not watched you know you should everybody should go and watch this uh, tremendous series on apple tv which is called ted lasso 
right? And I think, you know, anybody should watch, watch it. I think it's fantastic. It will change your life, you know, to tell to a television series, it will change your life and made for entertainment, something will change your life. It's rare, but it does, right? And the first episode of this, this is about a coach who goes to coach a, a English Premier League team, a football team. And, you know, the first thing he does, he writes on a big piece of paper, believe, and he sticks it on the uh, dressing room. And, you know, trust me, the entire series, they start believing things, you know, it, it really changes their motto. They see that written there and it changes them. So if there is something you believe, if it's something you must do, write it down and trust me, magically it gets done. And the third important productivity tip is from this book I recently read. It's called Make Time. Uh, it's a beautiful book. It is uh, written by two people who used to work in YouTube and Google. Uh, and, you know, they actually made systems which were designed to keep people into something which is called as infinity pools. So, you know, YouTube is an infinity pool. What an infinity pool means is that it sucks you into that system, right? So if you watch one YouTube video, there is another one and there is another one, then there is another one. There are infinite YouTube videos. So if you if you can, you can actually spend your entire life just watching YouTube videos. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, but they are actually, these apps are designed to do that. But these people, they actually came out from this mold and said, that no, you must perhaps do things which actually matter to you. And you know, one of the important, there are a lot of principles here, but one of the important principles from this book, which I really loved, is that every day in that Pomodoro timer, have 25 minutes which you want to do for yourself. It could be a pet project, it could be an app you are designing, it could be a, a new business that you are trying to set up, it could be a new practice that you are venturing, it could be that small little project that you wanted to do with your daughter, uh, it could be, you know, uh, some some book you wanted to read, some movie you'd wanted to watch. 25 minutes a day, spend it for yourself. Spend it for doing things which you love, which you want, which you want to put a mark in this planet. That is what you should be doing, right? We do things for our patients. We do things for our friends. We do things for our relatives, for our for everybody. But we don't things, do things for ourselves. And if something gives you joy, if something gives you a direction, something gives you pleasure, something gives you a, a mission, that is what you should be doing 25, at least 25 minutes a day with full focus done to that, right? And trust me, you know, this notes in endocrinology app, I, it was an idea for me for a long time. I could not do it, but then I put this, I, I you know, wrote it uh, on my to-do list every day, uh, to do it every day. And then I spent 25 minutes every day doing it and I could do it within a month, right? So things which you could not do for years, you can do it in a month if you are, if you give a little bit of time every day for it. Now let's come to the productivity apps, which that I use, that I recommend to you, and that perhaps, you know, you should start downloading and using right away. Okay, so one app which I highly, highly recommend is called Todoist. Now Todoist is, is in the class of to-do list apps, and everybody must have a to-do list app. I think, you know, it is essential part of today's life. Uh, there is a concept which is called, we'll come to this concept again in a few minutes. It is called the concept of a second brain. Right? This doctors need to understand very importantly. See, we, our brain is actually meant to do creative things. You know, you are, you are meant to create something, think, analyze, calculate. These are things which your brain is supposed to do. But how do we, what do we do with our brain? We feed in unnecessary things. Like for example, you know, uh, some, some uh, random uh, dose of some random medication which you're never going to use. Why do you need to put that in your brain? You can put it in a, in a, in a notes app and you can go back to it when you need to use that drug or you know some uh, other random thing you know which which you had to remember you know buying groceries uh, picking up bananas on your way home right this should not be in your brain this should be on a paper on a on an app somewhere else and it frees your brain from things which are more important which are more necessary so to do is is one way of putting a second brain uh, and there are a lot of other to do list apps right? Uh, Microsoft has one called Microsoft to do Apple has an Apple reminder or Apple notes and Google has something called Google tasks. These are all free device, free things to do is, is a paid one, but it's worth the money. It's not big amounts, a small amount you have to pay every month, but it's definitely worth the money. Some of the features, you know, I really like about this is, you know, I'll show you here. Uh, so this is, you know, a GIF of uh, my to do is uh, thing. You know, there are a lot of interesting features, you know, for example, you can, you can actually color code it, right? So presentation is, is uh, yellow, which is, uh, you know, for me, category two, and then you have something which is uh, blue in color, which is, which is category, which is priority three, something which is very, very urgent will be priority one, right? Uh, you can, you can put time on it. You can put date stamps on it. So you can, you can, and you can use natural language processing, which, which means, you know, uh, 
presentation on Monday, uh, on next Monday at 8 a.m., right? It automatically puts it, and when you, you can easily sync this with your Google Calendar. So that means anything, any time that you put in also goes in your Google Calendar, and then it gives you a reminder, your Google Calendar gives you a reminder on any device that you're using, right? So you can see here, uh, you can see, you know, I had schedule uh, uh, one, uh, you know, I had to go and meet my friend, he had an inauguration, and Seanak, if you're listening to this, I actually did not do this. Unfortunately, I could not go and meet him, but then I put it in my list, right? Instead of, uh, you know, just thinking about it, you know, you just put it in the list and then you, you know, uh, when when it comes to it, you can uh, you can do it when it, it's required. So this is Todoist. It's a very great, it's, you know, fantastic app. You can even classify them according to the various, uh, you know, uh, uh, projects. So for example, you know, uh, references that I have to see, uh, CMEs that I have to give, payments, subscriptions, everything, you know, I categorize it depending on the, projects that that it falls into and there is something called lifetime to do is which I make where you know there is something I want to do uh, I don't know when but I just want to do it sometime in my life you know I put it in a lifetime to do is and then you know perhaps uh, bring it out when I have the time for that now the second app which is slightly pricey but again this is this actually is the originator of the concept of the second brain and that is called Rome research and if you are an academic doctor, if you're a doctor who is little bit into academics or fully integrated into academics, Rome research you must have. I think this is a completely a revolutionary app. This is something, you know, it, it falls into category of notes app. Uh, there are other ones like Obsidian, which is also great. I, in fact, discovered Obsidian after I discovered Rome research. Uh, otherwise, you know, perhaps Obsidian would have been my primary one. Uh, Apple notes, Evernote, these are other, other notes category. There are lots of notes apps of different varieties. Uh, the one which I, which you should be using is Rome Research for sure. So Rome Research actually has a concept called, which is called bi-directional linking. Now, you know, just to give you an example, for example, you know, it starts with a blank page. So it's a browser based app. You don't need to download any specific software for it. You can just go use your Google Chrome or you can use a Safari. Uh, you know, it uses the concept. So it starts with a blank page where just a date is mentioned, right? Now, when you, uh, you know, you just type something and if you put it in uh, two box brackets, it creates a page specifically for that. For example, you can see, uh, you know, if I am writing, if I read something on type 1 diabetes, so I was going through my journals and I came across something on type 1 diabetes, I just put it in a box, you know, uh, uh, for that and it creates a link for that. Uh, so, you know, let's say I am researching on type 1 diabetes in pregnancy. So type 1, I kept, kept it in a box and pregnancy, I kept it in a box, right? So next time, you know, when I, when I'm, making a, a presentation for type 1 diabetes in pregnancy all i have to do is type type 1 and type pregnancy and i get all the notes which i which i myself collected over the uh, long time on this topic right and you can put anything on it so you can you can put your you know some presentation you saw some youtube video uh, some pdf file uh, some picture anything you can upload on this and you know for example i copied something from uh, the Google and I, I can put it there, right? So this is the concept of bi-directional linking that you are able to link two things easily. And then when you search it, so it becomes your own personal Wikipedia, right? So anything you anything you read, anything you read, you just put it there. You don't need to, you know, create a separate chapter for it. You just write it down, right? And just create a link and automatically, you know, you, it is saved for life and you can always search for it, find it very easily. And this gives a concept of the second brain. You can make your own personal Wikipedia or Google you can just note it down on that date and it, it, it stays for in your, uh, you know, Rome research forever. Uh, one pro tip, you know, and this is something, you know, it's very important, my own workflow cycle. So let's say I'm making something, I'm making a presentation. The first thing I do is I look at the source, you know, I research. So initially first search for the source. Do I want to, want to you know, make my presentation based on some good review article, based on some good research paper? Then I collect all this information and put it in some, some uh, you know, app which collects all the information. So I typically use something called Pocket and for uh, academic papers, I use Mendeley. We'll come to these uh, later. Then I make some rough notes, you know, so I'm reading through that and I make my rough notes on Rome research. So uh, whatever I'm reading, you know, I put it on Rome research and then finally I make an output. I use uh, initially, even for a presentation now, I use uh, Ulysses or Word and, you know, there are ways in which you can convert your Word into a PowerPoint very easily. And that is what I do. That's for a separate talk altogether. So this is how I typically uh, do my workflow. But one very important pro tip here is, and this is something I learned from engineers, always separate your content from your design. So a lot of the times, you know, people when I, I've seen my own father, my father is a teacher and he makes a lot of presentations and I see him, you know, uh, when he starts making a presentation, he's thinking about the background, he's thinking about the font, you know, don't do that. 
first make your content, right? So first, your content is your king, right? So content is most important. Once you put the content, after that you think of your design. So first make a blank presentation with black and white slides, that's it, right? Standard font, black and white size. And after that, you can, you can put uh, animations, you can put transitions, you can put uh, whatever features you want. So always separate your content from your presentation, uh, from your output, and that is something very, very useful to you. The third app is called Mendeley. And Mendeley, again, is very important for doctors who are into research. So it's a citation or reference manager, and you can use any citation or reference manager, but Mendeley does everything, and it is free of cost. A uh, lot of people like Zotero, and Mendeley and Zotero are very similar. In fact, I would perhaps, in, in another life, probably I would have preferred Zotero, uh, over Mendeley because it has more integrations with other apps. But uh, I started using Mendeley and that's what I continue to use. And EndNote is something which is very, very good, but it is uh, not free, of course. So it, you have to pay for it. So why Mendeley? Mendeley is easy to use. It has a word extension. You know, most of the time we write in words, so it's good for that. You can use it for searching further references and it's free to use. So basically, what's a citation manager? So you read an article, uh, you, you know, uh, there is a citation extension on your uh, Google Chrome desktop. And uh, yeah, uh, and you just just click on it, and it saves the citation in the library. So next time I'm writing a paper, let's say I'm reading on osteoporosis, and I find a very interesting article on osteoporosis, I just save the citation on Mendeley. And next time I'm writing a review article on osteoporosis, uh, you know all these citations are available to me, and I just have to click on that in whatever format uh, you know I want the citation. It will be uh, uh, it will it will be uh, pasted on your Word document and. It, it'll create a bibliography automatically with automatic numbering, right? So that's the magic of a citation manager like Mendeley. It's easy to use at a, as a word extension. It's most importantly free to use. So I think everybody who is writing papers, uh, book chapters, etc., you must be using uh, one of the citation managers. Uh, I use Mendeley. Perhaps you could use Zotero or something else, but you need to use one of those. Uh, you know, there, then of course, there are many other apps I use. I, you know, I, I had to choose three. It's very difficult for me uh, to choose just three of them. But you know, some other ones which I which I really recommend. Uh, email clients, I personally use Gmail. It's the best one. You don't need to use anything else. But at work, I have I use Outlook, uh, which is also great. Uh, calendar app again. You don't need to use anything beyond Google Calendar. It is free. It is the best. You'd not find something better. Uh, if you want a screen capture, you can use ScreenFlow. Uh, I typically, whatever presentation I make, I, I capture it using ScreenFlow and I put it on my own YouTube channel. And uh, Forms app, you know, you can use Google Forms. But the one I use is called JotForm, which has more, more powerful features. And for Office, you should use Microsoft 365. You should, I'll come to this in a few minutes. Okay, so then there is a category of apps called Software as Service. So these are something which you pay a subscription every month. Right, and you use a bundle of software. So it's not one software; it's often a bundle, right? And this is called SS. This is the new, uh, you know, lingo. I think you should be aware now because you know you are going to hear a lot about SaaS, right? Software as service. So you know there are a couple of them which I really recommend. Now, one is that you should have some form of cloud service. I think in today's world, if you are not having cloud service, you are really in trouble, right? For example, I'll tell you right now. I am giving a I live in Ahmedabad, but I'm right now traveling to Bangalore for a conference. I have not carried a pen drive, I have not carried a hard disk, right? I hardly have anything on my laptop. All my data is stored on a cloud, right? I, I personally use OneDrive because it comes with my Microsoft uh, account. But, uh, you know, a lot of people love Google Drive, which is again the best. And if you are an Apple fanboy, perhaps you could use iCloud, which is again extremely good. So you should have some cloud service. What is cloud service? Basically, all your data is sa saved on a server. Uh, and you, it automatically syncs. So, for example, you know, if I make changes to my presentation, uh, it automatically, when it is saved on the cloud, these changes are automatically saved. So that's called a cloud service, and you should always use a cloud service because, you know, sometimes you know your uh, laptop suddenly breaks down, you need to use another laptop, or sometimes you know you want to access your file on your mobile phone, right? Or you want to access your file on your tablet, right? So if you have a cloud service, you can all your files are saved in a in a cloud secure cloud server. And you can easily access it anywhere, everywhere, without any hassle. And you must have a cloud service. You should pay for it. Don't use just the free services. Some You will need more space and pay for it. And also save space on your hard disk. And remember, we all know that our hard disk, it becomes a lot of crumple. Your computers and your uh, uh, devices become slow. Don't do that. Use a cloud service. Keep your laptops and your phones clean. And that's, that's uh, really very, very, very useful. Uh, you should use an EMR and EHR software. Again, you know, there's a separate presentation for this completely, so I'm not going to dwell in too much detail. But this is again something you should pay for. Uh, I typically use my own custom EHR, which I have developed uh, using JotForm. 
Uh, but you know there are many other options and uh, Mediva and Healthplex are the one which are pre pretty popular. Uh, but whatever EMR or EHR service you should uh, you should consider using it because I think that the next age is of data and you know you need to have all your prescriptions stored somewhere, your data stored somewhere because it's going to be very very useful in your practice uh, altogether. And you know you should have an office suite. Now there are three office suites which are very popular. Uh, one is of course the Microsoft one. This other is Google Docs again. These two are the leading industry leaders, but you have Apple's own Office Suite, which is not very popular. Uh, there are other free ones like LibreOffice and WPS Office. Now, we have all grown up, all of us have grown up using Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, you know, uh, Excel. Uh, in fact, these words have now become part of our day-to-day -day lingo. So, you know, uh, if it in today's world, you don't need to buy this software. All you need to do is you need to subscribe to Office 365. Office 365, you pay about 300, 400 rupees every month. Right, and you can download all the latest software, so all your latest PowerPoint, and whenever the PowerPoint is updated, it is automatically updated. You don't have to buy an updated version. And plus, they give you cloud service, so you can, of course, always, you know, all your data is st uh, stored in a Office uh, cloud, which is OneDrive. So everything is stored in OneDrive, and you can then share it with others. So let's say, you know, I'm making a presentation and I want Rohan to uh, edit it. Uh, or Rohan to review it and make changes to it. So, you know, I just send a link to him and he makes the changes and then it is automatically saved. So that's the power of, of using an Office Suite. Uh, and the Office Suite, which I prefer is generally Office 365 because we have all been more comfortable with Office 365. But I think Google Docs is equally good. Perhaps, perhaps Google Docs is better. But right now we are all stuck to Office 365 because that is how we have grown up using, right? So, you know, of course you can't do without Word and PowerPoint and you know, that's why it's very, very useful. It's very cost effective. It's cross platform so you can use it, you know, on multiple devices, uh, on your mobile phones, tablets, everywhere. It gives you one terabyte of cloud storage. So along with your 300 or 500 rupees that you pay every month, uh, it gives you one terabyte per account. It gives you cloud storage, which is huge amount. And most, I think the best part is if you have office family account, you can share it with five family members. So, you know, I'm not going to use one terabyte of my data altogether, right? So, uh, you know, uh, you can use the same data for the family account and your families can create the separate account. So my wife has, you know, I've given one of my account to my wife. So my wife uses the same Office 365 on her laptop, right? She gets all the benefits which I get, right? We don't pay separately, we just pay for once, right? So that's the uh, beauty of, you know, uh, subscribing to this service. Uh, okay, so let's now, talk about some just to summarize a few take home messages. First and most important thing is this you must remember that time is money. Save it and that whatever time you have left, you know, that every extra 25 minutes you get from listening to my presentation today, perhaps invest that in doing a project which you like, doing something which you like, something that gives you joy, something that gives you meaning in life and that is what you should be doing, it, right? Invest in a good software, right? A lot of people, you know, I, I find this very annoying. Uh, doctors specifically, you know, uh, they don't want to pay for software. Why? You know, somebody has spent time, money to make a software. Why don't you pay for it, right? Uh, you should consider paying for investing. I think it's, it's the right word in good software because good software saves you time. And this time makes you more money or makes, you know, makes your life more meaningful, right? So you always invest. Don't, don't shy away. Don't get pirated softwares. Don't shy away from paying money for software. Software is actually intellectual property of somebody, right? And you should consider paying for it and pay for good ones, right? Don't pay for, you know, uh, ones which are not really useful. Uh, most importantly, like I said, at least 25 minutes every day, work for yourself. Work for yourself, right? Rowan talked about making your own business. Now, all of us may not be able to start our own business or run our own business, but at least you can work for yourself. You know, 25 minutes, perhaps, you know, uh, write a paper for yourself instead of writing a chapter for somebody else. Uh, uh, in their textbook, right? So you could perhaps spend a little bit of time every day working for yourself uh, and that makes your life more meaningful. So, uh, you know, if you are into endocrinology or diabetes, you know, uh, we have this app called Notes in Endocrinology. It's free of charge. It's available on both iOS and Android. This is something, you know, it's, it's for me, it's a hobby, uh, right? But it now has started having more meaning. A lot of people come and talk to me saying that, you know, uh, it, it was notes were very useful in their, you know, exams, uh, in learning some a topic which they wanted, or maybe a presentation which they wanted to make. Those notes were really useful. So I keep updating that. Now we open this for collaboration also. So if you're interested in writing on some topic, you know, please feel free to get in touch with me and, you know, we'll be happy to uh, put your, uh, you know, article and your notes on our platform. 
So thank you for a patient listening. And this is also available on endocrinology.co.in. And again, I thank the organizers for uh, having me for this very, very interesting topic. Thank you.